Hi friends, Eric here. We have a brand new release of Excalibur for you today, version 0.27.0. It's got a few bug fixes, a few new features, and a ton of community contributions. Let's get into it. We have a few new features, including sprite tinting, fixed update support for stable physics simulations, some arcade physics updates, including some robustness around catching seams on a floor or clipping an edge, parallel actions for doing multiple actions at the same time, some sound features, such as seeking to a specific position, getting the current playback time, setting a specific playback duration, or getting the total duration of a clip. We have a few community contributions, including arbitrary scene activation data, which you can pass when you're transitioning to a scene. Random interval timers was added as a community contribution. We also added tile map editor updates, support for tile 1.9, collections of images tile sets, and some community bug fixes. There were more performance improvements, including some to the collision system, some to the tile map, and there was a big transform refactor that improved performance of the transform across the board. We also have a brand new sample for a grid-based movement, which you can see on the right, and you can see that at the GitHub Excalibur.js organization with the repo sample-grid. Digging into sprite tinting, you can do really cool effects like this, where we change the color applied to a sprite, and you can achieve kind of a rainbow effect like we do right here. Here we can show off a new feature called Fixed Update FPS, where you can specify an exact FPS for your updates to run at. In this example, we're running it at 10. I uh, don't really recommend that, but uh, 10 lets us show off the updates running at 10. You can see that green rectangle here is running at 10, and the graphics are being automatically interpolated, so visually it looks pretty smooth. Uh, we recommend that you use something like 30 or 60 and test your game with it, and you'll have predictable, robust physics. New in this release is Parallel Actions. It allows you to define multiple sequences to run in parallel. And as you can see on the left here, we have a heart sprite that is both moving, rotating, blinking, and changing scale at the same time. You define these sequences very similar to how you define a repeat action. You get an access to the action context and you can specify your actions as a list. Here we can show off some of the new features in sounds. First up is we can seek to a specific position in a sound clip and we can set a specific duration that we want to play that clip. So let's go ahead and do that. If I click on the yellow square here, we'll do that. Pretty cool. A new community contribution allows arbitrary data to be passed to a scene on activation. So like this, I can define some data that I want to have strongly typed in my scene. And then on activate, I can go ahead and do something with that data. In this case, I'm gonna log it out. Here, this is how we pass the data into a scene as we transition. And if I click go to scene, you'll see that that data was indeed passed to my handler. Pretty cool. New in our tiled plugin is now support for collections of images tile sets. So if you click on a new tile and you specify a collection of images, you can now create those. And add a collection of images. So in this example, I want to add two images. There we are. A new section for these Excalibur release videos is going to be the community highlight, where I show off some cool stuff that the community is doing. First up is Merlin by Matt Jennings. It's a meta framework on top of Excalibur built on Vite. Uh, it has a couple new features. One of them is file based routing for scenes. So if you have a file name level1.ts, it'll create a scene in your game called level1. Very cool. Also, it'll automatically import resources and load them. Uh, as you can see here, there's an image being imported and it is automatically loaded and available in Excalibur. Very cool, go check it out. Next is Tenpa MK2, who built a really neat little dino runner game where you click to build up your jump meter and jump over obstacles. Very cool, you should go check that out. They also put together a ton of examples on their GitHub uh, if you have uh, a different game that you'd like to make, you should go check out those examples and see if there's one you can use. 
Also, they made a template for working with tiled and parcel too. You should go check those out. Next is the Safe Aware plugin for Capacitor JS by Joshua Beattie. This is really, really cool because in some mobile devices, you'll have like a thing like this, like where you'll have a notch and you don't want to put game objects there. So here, this plugin will surface that information to your Excalibur game, and then you can avoid uh, placing things there. Very neat. Next up, I wanted to show a little turn-based RPG example by Chris K. Four Sevens that they shared on the GitHub discussion. Uh, this is really cool, and it kind of showcases what you can do. Uh, and I think in this example, they were using Greensock to do uh, the tweening and the animation. Very neat. Next, I want to show a game made by Simpang Gorilla called Krabby, where you play as a crab that collects keys, opens chests, and uh, fires little rocks at enemies. It's very neat. Good work. And as always, a big thanks to all our contributors. We include everyone that contributed in any way, shape, or form, either through submitting code, opening issues, fixing bugs, fixing typos, participating in discussions. Thank you so much. And as always, you can read more about Excalibur at ExcaliburJS.com. We have lots of documentation up there. And if you'd like to support us, you can click on the donate link up here at the top and check out our sponsor page or our Patreon. Thank you.